Hello and welcome to a video. Today we're going to be talking about version 3 of my little glitch camera board. This is the third video in this little series and I don't want to say it's the last video because I'm you know I'm gonna make another one but uh, it's the last one I have planned. Just to give a little recap of what this project has been about I started out uh, wanting to make soldering glitch cameras easier. If you've seen my videos before, you're probably already aware, but basically I had a stroke a couple years ago. My left hand is super weird. I have this funky glove to help uh, help me keep control of it, but basically I don't have the fine motor skills that I need to solder with both hands. I have to solder with just my right hand, which makes soldering to the teeny tiny pins of digital cameras pretty much impossible. But I thought, hey, maybe I can make a little breakout board out of Flex PCB to make it easier. And then from there, I thought, hey, maybe that's something that beginners would enjoy too, to make circuit bending cameras a little bit easier. So that was version one of the board, and I thought it was going to be a super simple project. However, when I made the first version of the board, I realized that there was an opportunity to not just make the soldering easier, but also to make bending cameras feel a little bit more like circuit bending. Rather than making a breakout board designed to bend a specific toy camera, I wanted to make something that could go into uh, pretty much any digital camera that used a similar uh, sensor connector. The idea there is it would be super easy to connect this and then make it easier to experiment with different ca cameras. Uh, experimentation being kind of the whole point of circuit bending rather than just kind of following steps or repeating the same process over and over. I thought that was super successful. I enjoyed that approach a lot more than the second one. So here we have the version 3 board. Again, I'm not saying final because maybe I'll make some tweaks in the future, but I'm pretty satisfied with where this landed because there's really only a minor tweak from the version 2 board. And if you've already seen the second video, you may have already spotted it. And it's this cutout right here. Basically, I've changed the shape of this board. The idea being, we no longer have to solder this tiny connector in place. We should actually just be able to sandwich it into the quick connector. I'll demonstrate that here in a minute. You can see on this board, it's double-sided, which means you can use it in either orientation. But what it also means is you can sandwich this board in between the sensor module and the sensor module connector, and the connection will remain intact, and these breakout points will let you experiment with different camera bins without actually having to solder this thing in place. You'd be able just to shove it into the connector. Hi everyone, Emilio here. From the future, Alex is sick, and he's already super late. Finishing this video, so he says I have to start doing some voice either. Work to earn my keep around here. Anyway, I'm excited to announce that this video is sponsored by JLCPCB. Not only did they provide the Flex PCBs for this video, but they're the usual supplier that we use for all our boards over at jetcircuitbent.com it's super cool that we get to work with them for video stuff and store stuff now speaking of pcbs the pcbs in this video are available to order now there should be a link in the description and you guessed it jlc pcb made those as well a big thank you to them for sponsoring this video and now back over to alex so you can see how they work. Now, since in video two, I focused a lot on how to actually, you know, build a camera, talked about setting up the hardware, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to try to keep this video super short and I'm going to focus primarily on how to use this board. So I'm not going to show the full process of putting together a camera. Maybe I'll make another video or two down the road where I use this board to bend a specific camera. But in this video, I'm basically just going to demo how to use this board, and I'm going to try to keep it pretty short and sweet. This is a different kid's camera than the one I've used in previous videos, but rather than focusing on this specific one, I picked it up because I thought the uh, Lego kind of thing was neat. But the main reason I grabbed 
one like this is that it has not just the front facing camera, also has a rear facing camera. If you've shopped for these toy cameras before, you know that there's about a billion different models, um, but basically there's two main flavors. There's kinds that just have a front facing camera and there's kinds that have a front and a rear facing camera. My previous models worked great on all those flavors that just had a front facing camera. But this board, since we don't have to solder it in place, we should be able to use it pretty easily even on models that use that have a dual camera. Again, I'm not going to focus too heavily on the specifics of this camera and how to bend it. But let's open it up and I will demonstrate how I'm going to install the breakout board. All right. And we can see there are two different camera connectors on this PCB, one here and one directly on the other side of the board, one for the front facing camera and one for the rear facing camera. Just to keep this pretty straightforward, I'm going to go ahead and attach our breakout board to this one, the front facing camera. First thing we're going to do is just remove the camera sensor. It just slides right out of the connector. Basically, our board is going to go in here and just go right in between the contacts inside this connector and those contacts on the camera module itself. you're basically putting you know twice as much inside this connector as it's designed for it's normal for there to be a bit of resistance um, obviously you don't want to super force anything with the electronics and stuff this small in general I mentioned that just because you feel like you're having to force it a bit. Don't worry, a little bit of force is pretty normal here. Now that I've got those both in, you want to make sure they both look straight as well. It can be kind of easy to get things tilt it off to one side, uh, which makes it really easy to accidentally bridge connections, which we don't want to do. Not yet, at least. Once they in, close our connector. Emilio again. Another reason this video took so long is because Alex changed the design halfway through. One of the testers suggested adding a bit of extra length to the neck of the board. Alex should have listened right away, but waited until he tried the version 3.0 boards himself and realized that it really does need to be longer. Oops. So with version 3.1, the extra length means that the board can be folded over like this. This means it can fit in more cases, making it compatible with more cameras, both version 3.0 and 3.1 are available for now, but we may not restock the 3.0 boards unless someone has a use case for these shorter ones. So leave a comment if you have any ideas for those short guys and want us to keep them around. But let's get back and see how they work. You may have heard just then, um, it took a little bit of force to close this. Um, I actually pushed the button and turned the camera on. Uh -huh is a good sign as that means our camera is probably working as normal yeah 
look at that. Shelves up there. All right, so our board should be successfully installed. We know that because we can turn our camera on normally. The picture looks normal for now. And now we have an easy breakout board to access the pins and we can experiment with some circuit pending. Now I'm looking through the rear facing camera and this is just to demonstrate that we can use either connector we want. As you can see, that's a pretty straightforward example of how it works. You basically shove it in the connector, start experimenting to find the bins you like, carry on from there. Super easy to use, short and sweet, and no soldering required. Real quickly before I wrap up the video, um, thank you so much to everyone who subscribes and appreciate everyone who does so after this video. Liking and subscribing is a tremendous help for growing the channel appreciate everyone who has done that and does do that um, as a small creator it's a huge help these should be on sale now um, i'll put a link down in the description thing um, i'm gonna try to make them as cheap as possible i haven't figured out the price point yet here are those prices and thanks again to jlcpcb for sponsoring this one emilio out i would super love to see what you all make with them and Hopefully you all can give these a shot and report back in the comments what cameras you were able to find and bend with these. I'm thinking they should work with a ton of different cameras, especially cheap little things that you can find off of Amazon, but I haven't had a chance to experiment with a ton of different stuff yet. Um, I just wanted to test these and make sure they were working and get them out as soon as possible. Would love to hear from you all on what you find. Um, so thanks again so much for watching and uh, looking forward to see what y'all make with these.